our secants. When we're doing our secant uh, graphs, remember guys, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. All right. So what's going to be helpful to do our secant graph is for us to just kind of forget about the secant for a second and just graph the cosine. Now, be careful when you're doing this, make sure you're using a pencil and just use some very faint dotted lines because we're not going to be using the cosine graph in our, in our final answer, but we're just going to use it to help us draw the secant graph. So what we're going to do right now is just kind of totally forget that I'm even graphing secant. And I'm just going to graph the reciprocal, which is cosine of pi x minus 1. So this is what we did in our previous chapter. So it's going to be a little bit of review on just graphing these. So remember, whenever we have a cosine graph, first thing we want to do is find the amplitude. Amplitude, remember, is your absolute value of a, which I've gone over. a is our 1. So it's absolute value of 1, which is 1. So therefore, nothing is going to change as far as the height of the graph. It's going to go up 1 and down 1. Next thing we figure out is the period. Remember, the period is the distance it takes for the graph to complete one cycle. The formula for a period is 2 pi over b, where b is your number in front of x. In this problem, our number is pi. So we take 2 pi over pi. The pi's cancel out. We're just left with 2. Okay. So sometimes when you're graphing, you're going to have units in terms of pi. Other times, you're not going to have units in terms of pi. And that's perfectly OK. So let's start to graph now. All right, so oh, the next thing I want to remind you of, remember, once you have your period, the last thing you really need to do is make sure how, remember, there's four important points I told you. There's kind of like four intervals of a period that are important for cosine and sine. So what you're going to do is that there's four important points Take your period, divide it by 4. What we'll get is 1 half, right? Yes? What is the, next, or the minus 1 come to? The minus 1 is going to be your final shift, which is a vertical shift, which is going to be downwards. Okay. So the first thing, this is a cosine graph. So what we can do is I just want to plot out first where we're going to get to, um, let's say, all right. Let's say here are going to be our endpoints. So from here's 2, and here would be 0. So if I have four important points, All right, kind of spaced out evenly. So therefore, the first important point is 1 half. Here would be 1, and here would be 3 halves. How did I get to these points? I just kept on adding 1 half. So I first went to 1 half. 1 half plus 1 half is 1, plus another 1 half is 3 halves, plus another 1 half is 2. Okay? That's why it's important to always take your periods, divide by 4, and figure those out. Now, usually on a cosine graph, we would start up here, right? That's usually, we know that a cosine graph without any transformations crosses at 0, 1 when it has an amplitude of 1, which this one does. However, as you requested, this tells you to shift the graph down 1. Okay? One real quick, I just want to remind you. If it was like this, it would now be a horizontal shift. right? But since the negative 1 is outside the function, we're going to shift our whole graph down. So instead of starting up here, I'm now going to start right down there. All right, and then, so it's going to be important. Hmm. Let's have this, let's have this be negative 1 and this be negative 2. All right, so now what we're going to do is instead of this kind of being our um, x-axis, this is going to be top. I'm just going to kind of make a dotted line just to kind of help me remember. Um, so now negative 1 is going to kind of represent this x-axis. And this will just kind of help me out too as far as graphing the problem. So. We're going to start up here. We have four important points. We know it's going to start here, and it's going to end here. On a cosine graph, we have a minimum that occurs halfway, and then we kind of have like two little intercept ways. So um, we have everything we need for our cosine graph. So we know the cosine graph is going to look something like this. OK? Everybody follow me? Now, remember guys, a lot of times we need to be talking about different periods. So let's, uh, let's just add a couple points here. Let's go in the negative direction. So that'd be negative 1 half, that'd be negative 1. So if you add in half of a negative period and then half of an extra positive period, would that make an extra period? Or would we need to do a full one in one direction? 
Oh, sorry, say that question again. Okay. You know how you want us to show two periods? Yep. What if we showed like half period in a negative direction and half next period in a positive direction? That's still full periods. Okay. Um, and then just look across here and then go down there. Okay, so there we go. We got, um, like I said, that this is two full periods. This is a half in the negative, half in the positive. Two full periods are shown. Okay, well now remember, whenever we're dealing, so now that's our cosine graph, right? So that's what we deal with cosine. Now the reason why it's helpful for us to do this in cosine is because there's a couple things we need to remember about when we're dealing with reciprocals. Each one of these points where, it cro where these little intercepts are, remember guys, if I was to shift these up, these are where it would cross the x-axis, meaning your cosine would have equaled zero. So remember, if you have secant equals one over cosine, well, if at these points, cosine would equal zero, what these points represent is asymptotes. So if you guys can think of um, any time where you have your, what we call like our kind of reflections points, these are each of your old um, intercepts, these are now going to create asymptotes. And I showed you guys previously, you know, why this works. And I can show you um, in a different example but what you guys need to understand is each one of these S um, reflection points, because remember, if, you, if we took away the shift down, if we were to shift this whole graph up, you would notice that these are all your intercepts, right? Yes? Let's forget about the shift downwards real quick. If here's just the regular cosine graph, right? Everybody see this? Yeah. At these points, what is my, so this is cosine of x, right? At these points, what is my y value? When I plug in like, let's say, what is this? Cosine of, um, this is pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 is what? What is the y value, what is your output value of cosine of pi over 2? When you plug in pi over 2 for x, you get what is your y value? Zero, Zero right? So if I say secant, of pi over 2 is equal to 1 over cosine of pi over 2. Well, we just said cosine of pi over 2 is 0, right? So what that really means is 1 over 0. So can you evaluate for the secant of pi over 2? No, because it's undefined, right? Since it's undefined, if you guys remember rational functions, remember rational functions occurred, we had asymptotes when the bottom of the equation was 0. Do you remember that? Yes. Two by math. So this is the same thing. At each one of these points, we now are going to make asymptotes because it's impossible for us to evaluate for our secant function. So these are those points, but we just shifted them down. So you look at where your intercepts would have been, you know, like I said, and now what happens is those create your asymptotes. Okay? Then what happens is now we're just going to take our reflection points and pretty much reflect from your parabolas up here. Okay. And then what we can simply do is kind of erase our cosine graph because we don't really use it anymore. And it was just used just so we could find, we don't really need this line anymore. It was just to kind of help me understand like where these little where those intercepts were, so I could rewrite the thing. So then, you got your final graph. Ta-da! Yay! Right. Right. Make sense? Any questions? All right. You guys just need practice.